hand making corset. This is part two of my uh, making an 1896 ensemble on my 1896 machine. Can you see it? <laughs> so in this video, I am going to be making the corset, which is, I'm so excited about it. I've only made one corset before. I've made a couple stays and I really enjoyed that, but I've only made one corset and I didn't really like how it turned out in the end. It didn't have a lot of shaping. This corset is going to be based on an original from Symington collection. So I chose this one because it kind of had the vibe I wanted. It's got like a little corded panel and it's got the spoon busk, which I'm excited about. I just realized that m m my spoon busk is slightly, quite a bit smaller than the pattern, but we'll figure that out in fitting. <laughs> So this one is a pattern that was in production from 1892 to 1898. So it's just in the right period. So, so I've got my pattern. Um, I'm going to copy it up. Copy it up. Copy it off. <laughs> I'm going to copy it off on, um, I was going to use baking paper, but I'm out of baking paper. So I've got some, 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 some kind of semi see-through wrapping paper. Um, so I'm gonna copy it off on that and then um, back it onto paper just because I don't really want to ruin this print because it's really nice. <laughs> and I might want to use it in the future. I've got my spoon bask. I've got my synthetic whalebone. And I have got little aglets and a lot of eyelets and I've got some got some silk threads got some lace oh I'll show you my fabric right so I've got this um, kind of top silk it's gonna be the outer layer of the corset and the inner layer the lining is gonna arrive soon hopefully why do I always start projects without having the fabrics ready <laughs> right yeah but I'm gonna start with a 12 and see how it fits I'm just gonna copy this off like just as it is first so that I can see where I need to probably take it out I also think I might need to shorten the waist because I'm quite short but either that or I need to buy a new busk <laughs> okie dokie Cool, now I'm just gonna copy off the pattern. one twelve and uh, a really sirens <laughs> Wee come on there we go right <laughs> so I've made one twelve uh, a really really ugly one uh, it's like a accidental R2D2 cosplay almost uh, <laughs> I just made it really right because uh, well, it's the first 12 and it's never nice, so. Uh, but I've done some alterations to the pattern. It was basically a bit too big for some reason. Uh, I've done the alterations and on the second 12, I'm gonna be a bit more, but well, I'm gonna put boning channels through the entire thing because this one, I only did every other boning channel. And I'm gonna get put 
all of the bones in and all of the boning channels in and hopefully it'll fit and then I can move on to the actual fabric uh, because I don't want to do more than two twirls <laughs> but we'll see about that I'm following the pattern <laughs> um, and uh, just putting I'm just using some uh, some bias binding bias binding uh, to create boning channels I'm gonna have two channels on each one of these so cool I try I tried to make it up on the old machine it just does not like that fabric so I'm just gonna use my modern machine to do the twirls and then I'll move back to the oh hello doodle she's visiting yes yeah, so she's <laughs> she's the star of the show <laughs> thanks you doodles yes uh, so I'm using my modern just for the twelve uh, so that I can just get it done quickly because I've been working on this for so long now so <laughs> I want to get it done she's so good bye doodles Yes, doodles, you will win everyone's hearts. <laughs> It is boning time. <laughs> Next step, I'm gonna insert the bones into the boning channel. I've got some uh, synthetic whale bone and I just need to cut it to size and then stick them in. First one is stuck. Yeah, the boning channels are just slightly too small because I used the the bias binding. It's just slightly too small, but it's fine. I'll just squash it in. I'm sharpening it um, a little bit so that it's easier to put in. I am not going to do that on the fi final thing because I don't want to get stabbed on my hips. But I'm doing it for this because it's easier and faster. camera I am struggling <coughs> I made this channel way 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 too small so I'm trying to force this through but I don't think it's gonna go so I 
I guess this one doesn't get a boning right now then. It's too fucking bad. Do the next one. Sup. <laughs> I have to like stand awkwardly like this because uh, I've not filed the top of the synthetic wheel bones yet. So it's cutting into my skin every 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 time I put my arms down. So I'm just gonna awkwardly stand like this now. <laughs> so while number two actually fits pretty well, I'd say. It closes completely in the back. Uh, so I think I need to take a little bit out so that I have a little bit of space. I think it could definitely go a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna take a little bit out in the back, I think. I might be able to take a little bit out the front, but I think I'll... Honestly, I think this fits quite well. Just gonna start making the real thing. But like, with a couple inches off the back. Maybe. Yeah. Ow! Ow! <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna stay like this now forever that's just just tea posing for dominance <laughs> am i am i a gen c memer now <laughs> <laughs> step is doing the cording and I think I know how to do it. I did like a little tester and I think I kind of got the hang of it and basically I'm just gonna encase this thread inside the panel. Um, I hope I have enough of it. If not, then that's too bad for me. I also bought a, a cording foot, so I can do one cord and then stitch it, and then do one cord and then stitch it, and that means I don't have to pull the thread through at the end. Okay, so the cording foot is basically half of a presser foot. So what the normal presser foot does is push down the fabric on both sides of the needle so that there's, it holds the fabric stable and then you get a straight stitch. But when you want to stitch something that one side is slightly taller than the other, like with cording or zippers, for example, um, you need one that is, that has like half of, half of it gone, basically. So it only presses down the fabric on one side and not the other so that you can stitch a really neat line as close to the edge as possible. A cording foot allows you to be close to a thing that is bulkier than the other side, while a normal presser foot just holds the fabric down properly.
So here I'm just pinning the panels together. I'm flat lining the panels with the seam allowance turned outwards. The seam allowance is going to later be covered by the boning channels. So this is a way to just encase the seam allowance without having more layers. And then I'm just trimming the seam allowance with my scallop scissors. That's just making the seam allowance real small. Trying not to make it fray too much, but you know, it's gonna get covered. And then this panel I'm just pinning on like this. I am not seam sewing the allowance to the outside. And that's because there's no boning channel across the cording. And then that just gets stitched on. And the back panel is finished differently than the other panels. It is sewn right side to right side and then the seam is then folded over to the right side so that the seam allowance is on the inside. I've given this one quite a lot of seam allowance because this is where the eyelets are gonna go. I want there to be a little bit more sturdiness but basically this is the neater way to do it. And then I'm just ironing the edge so that it's nice and crisp. Yes, I am ironing on the table. Don't judge me. And then I'm just top stitching along the outer edge. I'm just wanting to make sure that that edge is real strong and nice uh, as this is gonna bear quite a bit of weight with the eyelets. And then the first boning channel oh oh no oh no i ran out of thread so on the back panel there are two bones uh in the back panel and they are not in boning casings they're rather in the, between the layers just to support the eyelets in the back there The busk here I'm uh, basically drawing on where the eyes are. This is because they need to stick out between the seam. Uh, it is basically finished the same as the back seam, however when I get to those marks I skip over. I just stop sewing, skip forward and then continue sewing down again. And this is so that the, the eyes can get through the seam without breaking anything. And then I've also top stitched the same way, but for this one I'll need to fasten the threads on the back side so that it doesn't all fall apart. And then the basque just slips in between like so. And I'm just gonna hand stitch around the basque. It's too shaped for me to really get it nicely under my machine. And then I am just basting on a uh, waste tape, which is like to help make the corset a bit stronger around the waist. That's where most of the weight will uh, be pulling. And it is basically just sandwiched between the back panel and the rest of the corset. And then the same on the other side with the front panel and the rest of the corset. So it just gets hidden in that seam, the edge of it. And then I'm just making some boning casings, the casings for the boning channels, and I'm just snipping out some straight lines, folding them under. Oh, hello, doodles. Maybe a little space. The boning channels are folded over and ironed into the right size and then cut to shape and basted onto the corset as such. And after I've done that, I've moved the pumpkins for the cat so she can sit on the high spot, despite having a cat tree. And then I'm just sewing the boning channels on. I'm doing a top stitch, one on each side and then one in the middle so that there can be two boning channels on each casing and I'm just being very thorough to measure that they're 
the right size with my little stitch gauge. I'm going to harvest the bones from my second twelve, which is why I didn't really do much with them in the first one, because then I can do it now, just cutting off that spiky edge I used and filing it with a nail file so that I don't get stabbed again. So the back bones I ended up uh, swapping out for steel bones instead of these uh, synthetic whalebone, just because the synthetic whalebone couldn't handle the strain of the lacing. Uh, so later on I just unpicked the binding just over the bones and just swapped them out. The boning is finished. Now it is only hanging the edges, eyelets, and technically flossing. I might add some of these to it. We'll see. I think I want to. I think that would be nice. I'm just going to bind it in the same stuff, self binding as I did the burning channels. <laughs> okay, that's my next move. Oh, it's very important to pull the sewing machine out of shot. Well, anyways, I am here stitching on the binding on one side with the machine, then pulling it over and then stitching the other side. I did unfortunately run out of thread literally half a centimetre from the edge. Look at that. Devastating. And then I'm just attaching some lace. I did end up unpicking the lace and redoing it because as I was doing it I decided to gather it for some reason and it just ended sticking up like a tutu and did not look nice so I just kind of pulled it out and like let it hang the way it's kind of wanted to hang and then um, just redid that afterwards. So the final step is doing the eyelets. I marked out the eyelets circa one inch apart, except for the waist ones, which I've made slightly closer. Then I'm using my awl to pull the fibres apart and put in the eyelet. However, <laughs> it was an absolute struggle trying to push the eyelet through because it was two layers of two different materials. So the silk it was very thready while the cotton was like really sturdy. It was quite difficult. I also do not own a hammer apparently, so um, I may do. I've got a dumbbell. It worked. The only thing left is the flossing and then I'm finished. I'm trying to work here. <laughs> so that is my corset finished. There's always like little things that I want to do more. Uh, I would like to add some flossing up here, just some um, aesthetic flossing, but honestly it's not needed and I have other projects that need doing. 
I'm pretty happy with it. I do think I should have chosen a different fabric because this one frays a lot. So it was really difficult to like make the boning channels, the casings for the boning channels like on top because everything kept falling apart. <laughs> uh, so I think I should have chosen something that was more less fraying. But you know, when you buy silk on eBay, it's not like you know how fraying it's going to be. I'm actually quite uh, <laughs> satisfied with the flossing on the bottom. My first round of flossing was absolutely horrendous. So I'm not even going to show that because <laughs> it was real sad. I mean, I've, I've never really been good at embroidery. Um, so when I was like, oh, I can do this. I don't even need to look up any tutorials. Yeah, no, I just looked awful. Didn't do the thing it needed to do. Uh -uh. So but I did end up watching an actual tutorial. Uh, I'll link that down below just <laughs> because I did not suddenly get much better at embroidery for no reason. But yeah, basically just making little hearts at the bottom. Simple, easy. That was probably real loud. <laughs> I quite like the, the silk ribbon. Sometimes it gets a little bit stuck, but I think if it was something else, it would probably get just as stuck. These are just um, fancy aglets. They don't actually work. Like they don't go through the, the hole, <laughs> the eyelets, but they're very pretty. They're just for show really. So I sewed them on after I'd uh, laced up the corset. Just sewed them to the end here. And it matches the eyelets, but it does not however match the busk because somehow I managed to order a silver busk and gold everything else happens. <laughs> the fit is pretty nice. Like I quite enjoy the fit. However, I do think I should have given myself a little bit more in the back because on the 12, it was like completely closing in the back. And I was like, okay, I'll take a couple inches off. But I think I might've taken a little bit too much off because it's kind of hard to lace it. Yeah. It's just kind of a little bit small, but not really. I had to replace the backbones. Um, the synthetic whalebone ones with steel ones because the synthetic whalebone ones just completely bended out of shape. And um, the steel ones are like holding all right, but I do think I should have gotten some kind of stronger ones. Next time I'm gonna be using a lacing bone, um, which is basically like a really thick steel bone with holes in it where the eyelets go in. Basically it's all one piece so that the bones don't flip when I pull, when I close it. Otherwise, I think I'm pretty happy with it. It fits pretty well. The only thing is I do need, I think I might need to add a little bit over the cups, specifically my left one, <laughs> because people are um, asymmetrical and the right one is fine, but the left side tends to be a little bit small. So I think I might see if I can just add a little bit of height here, you know, with like a back panel or something, just to <laughs> make sure everything stays secure. I am pretty happy with how it looks. It gives that proper like late Victorian Edwardian S shape, kind of the like the straight front and the bowed back, which I think is real nice. I'm very excited to continue on this project. I'll probably need to make a corset cover at some point, but I might just whip that together. Next step is the skirt and probably the blouse at some point and a jacket. And then I've got an 1896 ensemble. I am trying to get this project finished by about mid February, hopefully, uh, because I've got a talk coming up on 19th century wear and most of my, well, 18th century costumes I've made don't belong to me. Like they're commissions or they are for theaters or such. So I'd like to be able to bring something to the talk that is Victorian, um, like I did with my 18th century talk um, last autumn. Um, so yeah, it would be nice to have something to actually bring and show. Righty, righty. Okay. More projects to come.
subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.